Today, we're showcasing WP Forms. In this video, I'll walk you through step-by-step -step on how to build up an online store for your website. E-commerce is booming these days and pretty much any business that has anything to sell, whether it's services or products, you'll want to have an e-commerce store. So I'll show you how to set it up quickly and then make sure you stick around to the end because I'm also going to share some tips that you can use on your website to increase conversion and increase the average order value of your website. There's never been a better time to start an online store. And with all the technology out there, you can get up and running in just a matter of a weekend or a day or an afternoon if you already know the products that you want to sell. So we'll cover the three things, three main things that you need to have a finished product by the end of this video. First one is a domain name. That's simply where you send people for your store. For instance, wpbeginner.com. That's where we send people. That is our website name. So you want to have an idea of what you want to call your website. You also need a hosting account. A hosting account is simply where the servers are that host all of your files for your website, all your images, your database, and things like that. And then the other thing you need is simply 30 minutes. The way that things are nowadays, it's very quick and easy and painless to get up and running, especially if you have already in your head what you're going to buy. If you've already sourced the products that you're going to use, then you can get up and running really quickly. So those are the main things, things that you're going to need to get this going. And then this is kind of the steps that we're going to take throughout this video. And don't worry, several of these actually will be handled pretty much in one click because it's gotten even faster to get up and running. There are two main platforms that we recommend, Shopify being one of them. And then the other one that we recommend is basically WordPress plus WooCommerce. It's just you have complete control over your website and over your products as well as your store. And for this video, we'll be using the WordPress WooCommerce combo and we'll be using Bluehost because we think it's the easiest way to get up and running. With Bluehost, you can also get your domain for free for the first year. You also get free SSL certificate, which you need for payments. Bluehost makes installing WordPress and WooCommerce even easier because they do it pretty much for you once you set up a hosting account through them. And you can click on the link in the description below and it'll take you to this one where you can click start your store. From here, you can choose between two different types of setups. You can either do the standard, which has all of these features. I am going to show you the premium version, and this comes with even more items down here, like online booking, online appointment scheduling, subscriptions. All of these are premium add-ons that are included in this price. Also, the local tax and the local and county tax management is a huge item. I have set up WooCommerce before without having this, and it's a bit of a pain to set up on your own. So it might just be worth it to do that. So there's some pretty cool features that you can do with thousands of dollars in value added to it. I'm going to use this one. You pick which one works best for you. So on the next screen, you can put in the domain name. This will be the one that will that you'll get for free. And then you can see if it's available. If it's available, you'll get a, blue, a big green arrow up here or a big green section up here that says, okay, it's great. You're good to go. If it's not available, they'll give you some suggestions that you can choose from. You want to go in and create your account and then you'll see the package information of the items that you'll get for free. Add your credit card information and go ahead and say that you've agreed to Bluehost terms. Once you click submit, now Bluehost will go out and create your site. And what they're doing right now is they're creating your hosting account. They are installing WordPress for you and they're installing WooCommerce. So we can go back to our Google sheet and we say that that is done. That is done. The SSL certificate is automatically installed for you as well. So that is finished. They also install WordPress and they install the WooCommerce store. So several items have been done for us. Now we just need to log in and you'll probably see something like this. Over on the left, you can go to my sites or you can simply log into WordPress. When you click log into WordPress, it'll take you to your WordPress dashboard. Now, depending on how yours looks, you might see something like this, or you might have a screen that says, let's help you. You can say no, because we're going to set this up together. When they set up SSL certificate and SSL certificate, they may not have, you'll want to make sure that the HTTPS is set up on your site just to make sure that everything is good to go. So the first thing you want to do is go to settings, go to general. And in here, there are two entries here, the WordPress address URL and the site address. Just make sure that there is an S in here on both of those. And then you can scroll down and click save changes, which is cool. 
Now, if you do that and you do have to add an S, you may have to log back in, which is fine. Just simply go back to your WordPress portal, or if you've copied your username and password somewhere, then you can log back in. Now we can get set up. You can go to WooCommerce and that should launch the WooCommerce wizard. And if it doesn't, you can always go to products, all products, go to help and click setup wizard to set the wizard up and we'll walk through this part. Now you see the WooCommerce setup wizard. So you want to add your address here. From here, you can choose which industry you're in. From here, you can choose which products you'll be selling, physical, downloads, subscriptions, memberships. If you get the premium, then subscriptions, memberships, bookings, customizable products and things like that, they're already part of the subscription fee. From here, you can choose how many products you want to display. Are you currently selling anywhere else? We'll say no, we're just setting this up. And then they also suggest some of these items to start driving traffic to. For now, we're just going to say no to those. Now you can choose a theme. A theme is how your site looks to other people. And so it's pretty important to choose one that looks good, looks inviting, but also showcases your products really well to others. The default theme is the storefront and that's the currently active one. You can see it here. You have a bit of a dashboard here, but we always like to go over on the left under WooCommerce. You can go to settings and you'll see several tabs here that you can choose from. From here, we're going to click on payment section payments. And these are all of the payments that come with WooCommerce. The PayPal standard is the easiest way that you can get up and running with accepting payments. So we're going to toggle that one on. I'll also recommend doing either a cash on delivery or check payment, turn that on. And that's just so you can test out the orders without actually having, having to go through a payment processor. So once we have those selected, you can also click setup for PayPal standard. And from here, you just need to enable it and then add the PayPal email address, add your PayPal email address. Once you're finished, let's go down and make sure you save changes. Okay. Now let's take a look at some of the tabs up here under general. This is where we added our address and that put that in there with the general options of who you're selling to. You can sell to all countries or you can break that down to only sell to certain countries as well as your shipping locations. If you want it to be shop based address, which is the address that we put in there, if you want to enable taxes, you can choose that here and then it'll go through and set up, help you set up some taxes. You can also enable coupons and you can also allow them to calculate coupon discounts, stacking coupons. So you can choose to do that. Most people don't allow that. And under currency, you want to choose the currency that you're accepting money in with the separator, decimal and number of decimals. So we'll save changes for that. The next step we want to do is under products. We want to take a look at what type of products are we doing? So we're doing a shop page. That's when somebody goes to shop your store, they can go to the shop page. And then you can add cart behavior. You want to redirect to the cart. Once they add an, an item to the cart, you can redirect them or just enable Ajax. And that will kind of bring up the cart on the page without redirecting. What's great is you have these little tool tips that will tell you what everything is. So basically these are image URLs for your products and you can choose for the weight that you want. Since I'm in the U S I'm going to do pounds and I'm going to do inches for dimensions. If you want to enable product reviews, a verified owner, you can do that as well. If you want to enable a star rating, which gives people a visual of how these products are, you can do that as well. We'll save changes and then move on to the next one. Under shipping, you want to set up your shipping zones and then you want to do payments. We already did payments, accounts and privacy. This allows people to do guest checkout where they don't have to create an account, also account creation and registration policies and things like that. Under emails, these are all the transaction emails that they will get and you can go in and change them up and make them more personalized for your product. And then under advanced, if you just scroll down, these are basically the pages that are being set up that were created when everything was set up. They, you have a cart so they can go to cart. They're ready to check out. There's a checkout page. They can go to my account to see a dashboard of everything that they've ordered. You'll want to add a terms and conditions page. So you'll want to create that and then select this from the drop down. They don't create that for you because you'll need to create that for your business. Now that we have everything set up, now we need to create a product. The easiest way to do that is to come over on the left and we have products here and we can click add new. This is where you can create your first product and you can go in and do this manually 
or if you have a CSV or an Excel file of multiple items then you can import, but we're going to just show creating a product from scratch. You want to create the information here, scrolling down, you can give a regular price and then you want to do a sales price. And then that way when it's showing, it'll show that sales price and the regular price so that they see it's a, a, a sale for them. You can go in and choose inventory, shipping, linked products, or if there's other items that you want to sell that are related to this, you can do that here. You can also do a short description down here. And now over on the right, this is where you want to select images. You won't have any images to begin with, but I have some here already. So just to show you, you can add one image. And then if you want to add more gallery images or more images about this product, you can do that here as well. But now we've created a very simple product. We can click publish and now we can see what this looks like on our site. And we haven't seen our site yet. So let's go ahead and take a look so you can visit the site. And then from here, you can also click on shop and this will take them to the store. Now I have added a few others in testing. So you see those here, but normally you'll only see one where you can look at it, click on it. And then this is the product. This is also the theme. This is the storefront theme. That's the regular theme that comes or the default theme that comes, but you can set up any other theme that you want as well. Now, the other thing we want to look at is you notice this is our web URL address or the address of this t-shirt. We don't want to have that. So you want to click on change permalinks. And if you ever need to come back here, go to the left, go all the way down to settings and go to permalinks. This is where we want to make some changes. Scrolling here, we see plain. And so this is what's set up. We don't want that. We want to do post name. And basically that will be the name of the product, which I named it t-shirt. And that will be after my web address. So we're happy with that. So I'll scroll down, save changes. And now when I go to my site and I click refresh, and now we have t-shirt as my product name. Now let's look at customizing the theme. The theme is what your site looks like and you can customize it even further than what the base theme is. So we can go back to our dashboard and over on the left, we want to go to appearance, customize to make the changes. What's cool about the customize is whatever changes we make, we will see them here. This is the site title and you can do a tagline. You can do a site icon. So that would replace this little world right here. You can select it. You want it to be in 512 by 512. I'm simply going to choose this just because I have that image and then it'll want me to crop it. So we'll do that. Great. Now that'll be my site identity logo or the favicon as it used to be called. And here you can choose a background image. I'm just going to show you what this does. That will be up at the top. Just so you know, we will remove that. And then you also have the color scheme here. So if you wanted a different color than just white, you can change that here and you see it in real time. And what's cool about this is you're testing everything out, but you're actually not making the changes. None of these changes will actually go live until you click publish. So right now you're just previewing it all and making the changes. If you don't like that color, you don't know what to do. You can click on default and it'll go back to what it was initially. So you can go through this whole process and make any changes, but if you actually don't like the theme that you have, then we can actually change the theme. So we're going to get out of this. And if you want to actually change the theme altogether, then we'll go back to appearance themes. And again, just like before we see all of these themes available to us. From here, we can either choose premium themes. Those are paid for themes if you want, or you can choose the wordpress.org themes. These are free, but they are vetted by the WordPress theme team to make sure that there's no horrible code or things that might hurt your site. And what I like about the freemium is you can do a feature filter. So with the feature filter, you can say, I want e-commerce. So it's basically anything that is created with e-commerce in mind. We'll go ahead and apply filters. And then you can choose any of them from here. So you can scroll through, pick the one that's closest to how the brand, how you want your brand to look and feel. Just going to pick Astra because it's actually a really good theme with some starter stuff and it gets you up and running pretty quickly as well. And then you'll also want to make sure you activate it. Otherwise it won't be the active site on your website. So now we can go to our website and refresh it. And now this is what we can work with. So now when I go to shop, 
I see it a little bit differently set up. I kind of like this look a little bit better. It's just a little bit grander shop for me to work with. You notice when I keep going to the home page, it's kind of showing whatever blog post is there. I want, I want to change that as well. Instead of hello world, maybe I want the shop to be the home page. So I'm going to go back to our WordPress dashboard. We're going to go down to settings and reading. From here, you can change what the home page looks like. So right now it's just showing your latest post. That's why we're seeing that. But we actually want the home page to be our shop. And so then all of our products will show there. And then if you want to, you can create a new page and then make your posts. If you're creating a blog attached to your site, you can do that and then attach the blog post or the blog page as your post. So all the posts will show on there. So I don't have a blog page yet. We'll just save changes because I just want the home page to be my store. So now when I go and refresh, now that is my home page on my website. And I like that a lot better. Now that we've created products that we want to set up a, a, a few other pages for our site. We want to do a blog page, we want to do about and a contact page, and then we'll set some other things up as well. So to do that, let's go into pages. We'll go to all pages. And from here, you see all the current pages. And right now, all of the pages, except for the sample page, that's just a sample when WordPress is installed, we can actually trash that. But all of these others are set up and they were initially installed when WooCommerce was set up. So we can create a couple more pages. So for instance, we want to do add new and I'm going to create a contact us page because we want to set up a contact form. And I'll show you how to do that contact us and anywhere you see a little plus sign, we're going to click on that and we're looking for form. WP forms is what we want to do. And it'll say select a form. We haven't created a form, so we're going to create one and then we'll come back and add it, but we'll click publish. And so now we have a contact us page. We'll go back. I want to create an about page and I want to create a blog page. The about us, that's where you set in your story. So people know what you stand for, what your site is about, what you are selling. And now we're going to go back and we're going to do one more. Like I said, we're going to do a blog page and then we can go back into settings and change that all of the blog posts will come here. So we're going to publish that. And now we've created three of them. I'm going to go back and now we have more. And I want to add some of these to our menu. We haven't looked at menu yet. So we're going to go to appearance menus and we don't have any menu yet. So this is just pulling in our pages that we have. So we're going to call this main and the main will be up here. Create, I'm going to name it. Let's go ahead and create menu. And now we need to pick what pages we want to bring over. You can bring over pages. You can bring over posts, categories. There's several things that you can bring over, but I'm going to go to view all because it's not showing all of them. I'm going to do shop about us blog. What else do I want? Contact us and do check out and my account. If they're logged in, they'll see that as well. So I'm going to add all these over to the menu. You can rearrange these however you want. That looks good. We'll save menu and now we can refresh. Now we'll see this changes a little bit. So we've got our about us. We've got our blog. We need to, when I click on blog, nothing's there because I need to add that all of the blog posts will go to this page. So let's go back to our dashboard. Scrolling down, we're going to go to settings, reading. And you remember under reading, this is where we set up the static page for home page. Now we have a blog page. So we want to make all the posts go to this blog. From here, you can choose how many blog posts will show on one page before it starts going to next and next and next. 10 is good. And for each post in a feed, I want this to actually be summary because by default, it'll just do, show the full text. So you'll just have scrolling for days. So let's go do summary. And so it'll just be a little bit portion of it and it'll say read more to read more of it. So we're good with that. So let's save changes. Now, when I go to my blog page, there's one blog post that is here and now it's going to show. And when I have more, those will all show underneath as well. And then we created the contact us page, but now we also need to create the contact form. WP forms is the easiest drag and drop form builder for you. What's great is Bluehost installs this for you, but you'll need to go into all forms to create your first form. You can also go to add new. So we'll create add new here. And since it's simple contact form, this is the one we want to use. So I'm going to click on that. And the beauty of WP forms is now this is the form that I can use. 
You can make some changes if you want. You can change the name of it to just contact us. You can change what the submit button says. I'm happy with that. Go back to fields. This is really good out of the box. The only thing I like, I always like the simple field here and now everything else looks good. So we can save this and now we're going to go back to contact us to embed that, the contact us page to embed that. So I'm going to exit out of this. We're going to head back over to our pages and we're going to go to our contact page. And from here now that we have WP forms here, we can select the form from the drop down and it'll pull this in so we can get a preview of what this will look like. So that's perfect. That's all I want for contact. I'm going to save that. And now my contact form is set up. Now that you've created your website, you also want to make sure that you've got tracking installed on your website. So you know what customers are, what people are coming to your website, where they're coming from. So who's referring your site, what type of pages are the most popular pages and so much more to do that. You can do it with Google analytics and you can watch this video where I walk you through step by step on how to set up Google analytics, but to get Google analytics installed and connected with your site, you want to use monster insights. Monster insights is also set up on installed by Bluehost. So you can just click on the button here, or you'll also see it down here under insights. Now with monster insights, I would actually recommend you use their pro feature or your paid, their paid feature. So go to monster insights. So you want to get the pro feature or higher because that installs the e-commerce report tracking and it makes it super easy to find your average order value of your website. And it brings in a lot of other tracking features for your website as well. Once you get an account, you can go to your downloads area and you can download it. I'll also copy the license key. We'll head back over to our WordPress dashboard. From here, we want to go to plugins, add new. And these are all the plugins that are available for you to search for. And these are all of the ones that are in the WordPress repository. We're actually going to come up here and upload a plugin because we just purchased it. And you can either choose file or because I have it installed right here, I can see it. I can left click, drag this over. I'll install it now. And you'll want to stick around to activate the plugin as well. Once it's activated because we have the light version also installed, let's go ahead and click deactivate the light plugin. Now we see Monster Insights Pro, that's the one we want. So let's go ahead and activate this. From here, we can launch the wizard. And when you launch the wizard, it'll ask a few questions about what your site is. And based on that, it'll automatically turn on some features for you. Now we'll paste in our license key. And now let's connect Monster Insights. And what it'll do is with Monster Insights, it'll go out and connect to your Google Analytics. So if you've already created the Google Analytics account for this, it goes out and finds it. If you haven't, make sure you watch that video I mentioned where it walks you through that process. I have several, but you just want to find your website and then complete the connection. And now Monster Insights will talk to your Google Analytics so you can see the data and how it's how your site is performing. From here, it'll automatically turn on some items for you, which is what we want. We'll scroll down, save and continue. Now, Monster Insights e-commerce, that's the one that we do want to install. So let's go ahead and install add-on and let's activate it. You can also turn on Monster Insights for forms. So that'll track how many forms have been converted, how many people have seen it, and then they convert or submit a form. Those are the two main ones that you want to do. So we'll save and continue. And now everything should be good to go. So now we can finish and exit the setup wizard. And now Monster Insights is connected. And now what we can do is we'll see some data on our reports section. We'll go to insights and go to reports. And now we'll see this data. Since you're just setting it up, you probably won't see any data. It'll take a little bit of time for the data to start reporting. It also takes traffic to your site for the data to start reporting. We also want to set up the e-commerce section. To do that, let's go down to settings under insights. And we want to go to e-commerce. And from here, we want to do enhanced e-commerce. You see a little toolbar. It also tells you that you need to set up enhanced e-commerce on your website. So in order to do that, you go to your analytics, you go down to admin and over here on the right, you have e-commerce settings. You want to make sure that this is toggled on and you want to make sure that enable e-commerce is toggled on. You want to make sure that enabled enhanced e-commerce reporting is also toggled on. When both of those are toggled on, then you have a lot more reporting functionality for your site. So enhanced e-commerce is turned on here. It automatically turns on WooCommerce because it sees that that is also installed on our site. 
And so now we're good to go. Now we can see advanced report tracking for e-commerce. Again, you won't see any data here until you start making sales. But then from here, you can see the conversion rate on your site, which is huge because this gives you a starting point. So how, what is your conversion rate on your site and how can you improve it? Gives you the number of transactions. So the number of sales gives you the total revenue and it also gives you the average order value. Once you start knowing this information and then it helps you tremendously in improving these conversions or improving these sales. Now, once you start learning about how your traffic is doing and the e-commerce report tells you the transactions, the average order value, a way to improve the conversion rate of your site is by using something like OptiMonster. You can create little pop-ups little reminders to get even more clicks to your site. Once you connect it, you can then create a pop-up or a floating bar or a full screen inline slide in and gamified. The gamified is perfect for e-commerce to get somebody to sign up. Then they like spin the wheel. So we'll use this template, start building it from here. You can say whatever you want, add your information. This looks pretty good. I'm not going to go through too much because I think it looks great. And then this is the opt-in. So then you can do the display rules. So when do you want this to show up? By default, it shows up when time on page is at least five seconds, but you can go in even further. You can also do e-commerce product targeting. So if they've visited a certain product, then you, you can turn this on. So for this one, and just to show you, I'm just going to do time on pages at least five seconds, and then we can do integration. So if you want to start collecting emails for your e-commerce store, that is perfect. You either add a new integration and they integrate with dozens of email service providers. Most of the top ones that you see here. If you don't have an email service provider, don't let that stop you. By default, they will collect them under monster leads. So it's collected locally for you, which is perfect to get you started. Then under analytics, they will do their own analytics, but then you can also connect to Google analytics, which is what we just set up. If you want to do that here, then whenever you're ready, go to the publish screen. Now that everything is connected, we can also click preview and we'll see what it will look like on our site. So here's our site and it does the spin to win. So then they have to enter their email address to try their luck and then we'll spin. That should help with you growing your email list as well as increasing your conversions for any other products. Another feature that you can use on your site is installing something like push engage with push engage. You can do things like cart abandonment, push notifications, drop price drop alert. So when somebody goes, you can ask them if they are interested in getting updates from you and then they will see when these things happen with your site. You can push them to them. You can get started for free. And then once you set that up, then you have that on your site as well. And now let's take a look at our list that we've been going through. We see that we've added products to our site. So that is done. We have customized our theme. So that is finished as well. You've installed Monster Insights Pro to see the e-commerce conversion tracking for your site. You can also see the average order value of your site the transactions all in one dashboard. We've also installed Optin Monster that improves the conversion rate and also grows your email list. And then you can also install Push Engage, which will do things like price drop. You can also do cart abandonment, Push Engage as well. And then now the last thing is just to learn more about WordPress and to grow your business. And you can do several things like that by following our Facebook group. There are over 65,000 members in there who are all asking great questions as well as our support team who are helping them along. So make sure you click on the link in the description below. And now make sure you watch this video next where I walk you through how to increase traffic to your website. And I have a question for you. What kind of store are you setting up for your business? And thanks for watching.